as you can see behind me, I own the best webcams on the market, but even the best look pretty bad and they haven't been getting better. The Logitech Bria, what I'm filming on right now, was released in 2017. Many years later, there still have not been significant image quality improvements. So let me use the Logitech Brio, maybe the best webcam on the market as an example for what is wrong with the image of webcams. So first off, webcams just don't do very well in moderate to low light. If you just have your room lighting or day lighting, well, they're gonna look something like this. You need to absolutely flood them with light to get a usable shot. So something like this. And even with all this light, which is pretty much an artificial sun in here blinding me, you still see a lot of noise, a lot of grain in the image. You can see it on the wall, which is just static, but you can also see all the grain going around the screen top speed. You can really see it on darker colors, like my shirt, my hat. It just doesn't look very good. Additionally, there is no shallow depth of field or bokeh on webcams, including this, the Logitech Brio. So yes, it's true that I'm in focus, but at the same time, so is everything immediately behind me and way in the back of the wall. You can see the text at the back of the wall on the products back there, just as sharply as you can see text like on my hoodie. So when you combine that deep depth of field with all of the grain, it gets really distracting looking at all the stuff that's back there and the subject at the same time. And the last thing is color accuracy. I'd say probably the Razer Keel Pro, the only webcam that really gets kind of close when it comes to actually having good colors. A lot of the other ones, including the Brio, just kind of fall flat on a lot of the different colors when it comes to browns, when it comes to reds. A lot of them are just really off. And now we have a real camera, the Sony ZV-1. I dimmed the lights quite a bit down. They're about 10 to 15% compared to when they were blasting at 100% on the Brio. But there's still really good brightness overall in the shot and dynamic range. You see on my hoodie right here, there's the black on black coloring. And there is a whole lot less grain in the background, especially if you're looking on the wall or any dark colors. And you gotta love that blurry background. You can no longer see text super sharp and clear like you could on the Brio. So it makes the subject stick out way more from the background. And then the color accuracy so much better. Browns on my skin and in addition, all the colors on all the boxes in the back, just so much more true to life. And of course, I wanna to get to the bottom of this issue. So what I have here is the Logitech C920, which is still to this day, after over 11 years, the most popular webcam on the market. And this thing, a mallet, I'm going to smash open this C920 and find out what's inside to see exactly why webcams suck. So here we go. All right, so I can see exactly what the issues are here. Can you? If you can, then you probably know more about cameras than me. If not, well, let me break it down. So there are four main things that I noticed immediately. Let's start off with the first and probably biggest issue. Do you see this rectangle in the middle of the circuit board here? Well, this is the sensor. It's the part of the camera that actually captures light and turns it into a digital signal. Well, what's the problem with the sensor? Well, it's small. I mean, really, 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 really small. I measured it at about six by four millimeters, but that wasn't exact. But if you look at the actual dimensions of sensors that are like this, one over 2.3 type sensors, and these are a lot of times the same sensors that are in cell phones, the dimensions are probably more likely 6.17 millimeters by 4.55 millimeters. But this small size doesn't really mean a whole lot in context. So let me show you this. This is a Canon Rebel T3, pretty old camera. It has an APS-C sensor. Basically, it's a lot bigger. Let me show you. Okay, so here is the sensor for the Logitech C920, and this is the sensor size for the Canon Rebel T3. And just look at that size difference. Okay, so what does that actually mean for the image quality of this camera in comparison to the Logitech C920 and other webcams that use very similar sensors to that? Well, first of all, this takes in a whole lot more light. So, as I said, I'm using my ZV-1 that I'm recording on right now with a lot dimmer lighting setting, but the shot is still super bright. The sensor in the Sony ZV-1 is a lot larger than the sensor that's in the Logitech C920, not as large as this, the Canon Rebel T3. The C920, Logitech C920 sensor is probably around here, one over 2.3 or 2.5, something like that. And then we have this, which is the Sony ZV-1, which is the main camera that I record on, one inch type sensor. And then the APS-C Canon is this green box right here. So biggest, we got that Canon, then we got that ZV-1, and then way smaller down here, we've got 
the Logitech C920. But a larger sensor means that it takes in more light so it can do better in lower light performance. There's going to be a whole lot less grain. So even when there was a whole lot of light in the Logitech Brio, you could see a whole lot of grain. You can even see a decent amount in the Logitech C920. You just see a whole lot less of that in the Sony ZV-1. So lighting performance is one issue with having a sensor this small. But another issue is since this is so small, so is your field of view. So if hypothetically these two devices, the Canon Rebel T3, and the Logitech C920 were using the same lens, this camera with a much larger sensor is going to have a way, way bigger field of view. It's just gonna capture a much wider angle. And the Logitech C920 would be zoomed in super hard like if you cropped in multiple times. But that doesn't sound right because the Logitech C920, if you've ever looked at it, it's not super cropped in, at least not any more than this, the Sony ZV-1. It'll be kind of hard for me to show you the field of view of the C920 with this broken one, but fortunately, I have a lot more where that came from. So let's put this one on. All right, so now we have another Logitech C920. Technically, this is the C920S, but as I demonstrated in another video, exact same webcam. And it's not super cropped in. You can still see those other issues like the grain in the back, and it's not as good in the same lighting scenario as the ZV-1, but it's not super cropped in. What's going on? Well, that leads us to this. This is the lens. This goes over the sensor of the Logitech C920. Light first comes in through this lens, it bends it, focuses it, and then it hits the sensor where it can be processed. Now, because this sensor is so ridiculously small and it's gonna have such a narrow field of view, it would look like I'm like super zoomed in and nobody wants to see a camera that's looking like that. Because of that, we're gonna need a lens that bends light in a way where it makes the angle of view much wider. So webcam companies don't generally put the specs on the lens. They don't expect you to actually rip it out of the camera, but it needs to have a really short focal length. So this lens, for instance, has a focal length of 18 to 55 millimeters. So let's say this lens is open and it's at its 18 millimeter setting, which would be the widest angle of view that you can get here. Light rays would start to come in through the front of the lens and then they would bend and then get focused to the sensor. Now the physical length that it takes for the lens to bend and focus that light, that's called the focal length. There's an amazing video by Gerald Undone that goes in much more detail, but that's the basic idea of it. Now a longer focal length is going to be a more narrow, zoomed in field of view. So if I move this up to 55, then it'd be really zoomed in. And the shortest this gets is 18. So there's no specs on the Logitech C920 as far as the lens goes, but most webcams are built pretty similarly. So this is the Razer Keo Pro. Now on it, you can see that the focal length is 3.8 millimeters, right there. So when light is coming in through the Keo Pro, it doesn't take a lot of space for it to actually bend and focus that light. And those really short focal length lenses, like the Keo Pro, make a very wide field of view. Now you combine that super wide field of view of the lens with the super narrow field of view that you normally would get with a small sensor, and then you get something that's kind of in the middle where you're mimicking like this, which is the Sony ZV-1. This is maybe like 78 to 80 degree field of view. 78 is what you're gonna get on this, the Logitech C920. So what's the issue with having a wide angle lens with a very short focal length? Well, wide angle lenses like this are bending light in a pretty extreme way. So that little hole in the center, the entrance people, that's where light's going in. That cannot be too large and let in too much light. Otherwise, there's gonna be a lot of chromatic aberration and fringing, just a lot of distortion in the image. So the entrance people of this has to be pretty small to accommodate for having a wide angle lens. Now go ahead and throw up some numbers on the screen so that you can see examples. But I think it'd be more enlightening to just show you. When you have a smaller entrance people, light is able to converge very easily, which means you have a very deep depth of field. So small entrance people, deep depth of field. You can see everything in focus from all the way to the back, up to my face. In the C920, everything is sharp. Well, sharp, because it's a C920. But for the Sony ZV-1, the entrance people is so much wider, but the angle that light bends, it's gonna be very different. So only a very narrow portion of the image, a shallow depth of field, is able to be in focus. So I'm in focus, but the background super blurry. Now the cool thing with a mirrorless or DSLR camera is you can actually change the size of that entrance people. So right now I'm on f1.8, which is the aperture, which that's determined by the entrance people that's letting in light. If I make that smaller, so the larger number is smaller, let's say I make that f5.6. 
Now the image is going to go super dark because it's letting in less light because I made that pupil smaller. And let's say I put the ISO, the sensitivity to light to automatic just so that I can brighten up the image again. I'll actually put the ISO to 640 just so that you can see it a little bit clearer. Now I'm in focus as you can see, but also the background is in focus. So by closing that interest people, I've been able to demonstrate the same thing can be done with the Sony ZV-1 or other cameras like this, where you're able to get a very deep depth of field. Now, sometimes it's useful to have this very deep depth of field depending on what you're doing, but being able to switch between them is also really nice so that you don't have that really distracting background. So let me go back to those other settings, put this ISO to its lowest value here, 125, and the F number is at F5.6. And let me put this to F1.8, and then there we go. I'm in focus, but the background is not, and it's super blurry, and that's all because of the size of the entrance pupil. The C920's lens does not let you change the size of the entrance pupil, and even if you could, they couldn't make it wide enough to actually get you that effect of bokeh anyway when it's utilizing such a small sensor. I guess it's possible, but it'd probably be really expensive to get a lens like that. All right, so back to the C920. So there's one other issue that we need to address, which is the color accuracy. Why are the colors so bad on webcams like the C920, the Logitech Brio, and a lot of other devices? Well, there are a ton of factors here when it comes to color science, but one of the factors is the limited processing power of this circuit board. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I actually don't know how fast this is clocked to, or really a whole lot about the performance of this thing in general, in hard numbers. I can only assume that the processing power is not as good as most cell phones and as like the Sony ZV-1 or more high-end devices. In fact, if you've ever taken a picture with like a Google Pixel phone, I have the Pixel 4 XL, and you take a picture, it immediately looks pretty bad. In fact, like if you're just looking in the viewfinder, the pictures look terrible, but it takes a few seconds and maybe three or four seconds. And then once it loads up, it actually looks really good. They do a whole lot of post-processing with the CPU. C920 doesn't do that. It spits out an image really fast. So what you see in the preview is what you get. So that part's a little bit more speculation, but this is more concrete. This is the USB cable of the Logitech C920. This is USB 2.0, and the Logitech Brio has USB 3.0. 3.0 is what allows the Logitech Brio to get 4K 30 frames per second, but even at 3.0, it's still quite limited. It has to compress that into MJPEG, which is just motion JPEG. If you've even used a JPEG, you know that it's a lot worse quality than a PNG, and MJPEG is super compressed. In fact, I've demonstrated in my Logitech Brio videos, when you drop it down to 1080p 30 frames per second and use different compression formats or uncompressed like YUI2 or NV12, the image, the colors look way, way, way better. And I suspect that's one of the reasons the Razer Keo Pro was able to get its colors looking so good because it's able to do uncompressed YUI2 at 1080 60, but the image that it's actually sending in initially looks kind of soft. Not really sure what they're doing there, but it just doesn't look that good in the first place. So even though the colors are a lot better, it's a trade off. So yeah, sending uncompressed 4K 30 frames per second footage without a massive delay like you get with the Elgato 4K 60S Plus not really gonna happen. The 4K60S Plus has like a two second delay while it's processing all of it and sending it through that USB 3.0. And those are the reasons why, unfortunately, even the best webcams like the Logitech Brio just don't look that good. The sensor is too small, so it adds a lot of grain to the image and the low light performance is just not that good. There's a massive crop factor in the field of view, so it has to use a certain type of wide angle lens, which has a very short focal length, which means that there's not gonna be any bulk effect, not gonna be any blurry background. Everything's gonna be in focus with a very deep depth of field. And until we get like a USB 4.0 or 5.0 or whatever they wanna call it, that's much faster, like the speed of like PCIe, then there's gonna be a lot of compression when you're sending in data. So color accuracy is generally not gonna be that great because you're gonna be stuck with like MJPEG. Some webcams seem to have been figuring this out lately, like the Elgato face cam and the Razer Keo Pro, but the face cam's colors look pretty bad anyway. And I feel like the Keo Pro really compromised on sharpness to get their color accuracy. But getting like a 4K 30 or 4K 60 uncompressed, just not really gonna happen through USB 3.0. Elgato tried with the 4K 60S Plus capture card. By the way, that little measurement that I did does not work with the Elgato face cam because they kind of did some trickery with the way that they wrote it as full frame equivalent on their focal length. That's not really what it is. So the question might be, why don't webcam companies just use 
larger sensors? Why don't they just use better lenses, longer focal lengths? Why don't they get something that can get you that blurry background? Maybe HDMI out so that you can put it in a capture card and so you can have uncompressed 4K 30 or 4K 60 frames per second. Maybe they can just use better processors. What's the deal? Why aren't webcams getting better? Ultimately, it comes down to price. What is the consumer really willing to buy? And as was demonstrated at the end of 2021, there were some very expensive webcams on the market. There was this, the Logitech Brio. There was, that was like $160. The Kio Pro, $200. The Avermedia Live Streamer Cam 5, 13250. That's what it launched for. Stream cams like 170. And this Elgato Face Cam, which I think was a huge flop. This thing launched for $200. Now, during March, 2020, with the pandemic, with all the shortage, people were buying webcams for like three or $400 just because there wasn't another one that you can get. But once they were all available, the market showed that they just weren't really willing to pay $200 or more for a webcam. And a lot of them had to drop their prices or they would just tank on the best sellers list off the list entirely and just not get sold like the PW513. So these companies are stuck using really cheap parts, cheap sensors, cheap lenses, and then they're stuck in USB 3.0 or lower. So unfortunately, that's why webcams haven't been getting better and why I don't really see them getting better anytime soon. They raise the prices, people aren't gonna buy. And if you raise them too much, aside from people just not buying them, like if it was like $400 for one, you can't really justify getting that over just saving up a little bit more for maybe like a Canon M50 or something like that. Now it's possible that a new webcam will come out and surprise me, but after literally smashing one open with a hammer to look inside and see what the issues are with them, I just don't really see the physical limitations being surpassed anytime soon, especially with the cost of the parts. Anyway, this has been Bad Intent, and I'll see you in the next review.